Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Fernando Financio. Uh, I am a software engineer working for Red Hat for the last. Whoa, that is not this line. So, let me just configure something else here. Uh, give me a minute. I've been working for the head for the last 60 years and I'm part of the virtualization team. Uh, and for this talk, we have one goal, only one goal, install a CentOS VI. And no one is leaving till we do that. Uh, this is a quite easy thing to do and not time consuming, right? We just, like, how, how, how is it, how it, it's done today, right? Uh, we just go to centos.org. Uh, we can get centos now. Choose a DVD ISO, download it. Man, <laughs> that's a lot of time. I don't want to do that. Uh, so I know that there is, there are some problems like uh, git install, where you can do like something that is supposed to be easier. Uh, can you guys see my terminal? Very faint. Black on mark will be better. Sorry? Black on mark will be better. Okay, so let me just change it here. Um, well, I don't know how to change it here. So let's deal with it. Uh, so, uh, virt install has something that you can just do virt install, then you have to pass a name for the VM, you have to pass the OS variant. Uh, and then you have to pass disk, size of the disk, memory, the amount of memory that you want, then you can just specify a location. Does someone know uh, a real location for CentOS? Like, by, just by head? I don't, so I can just come to Rit installment page, uh, find it here because it has some examples. Uh, and if you get down here in the examples, well, we don't find samples. So I have to get back to the samples web page, uh, try to find the location for the installation. Uh, and then I have to, if I want to do an unattended installation, I have to come up with a kickstart file, come up with the kernel, uh, the, the, kernel uh, the command line for in order to pass the kernel to have it like installing. So, the only thing that comes to my mind is... Whoa, that's fun. <laughs> that's a lot of fun. And the only thing I want to do, I want to install and I want to install it now. This is the only thing that I want to do. Uh, I, I have tried to solve this problem like in the past on the boxes and I partially failed. And I'm going to show you guys why. Uh, so here is the non boxes. You guys can see it here. Uh, if you come to new, uh, you can just come to download, download an OS. If you type like CentOS, well, you can download it. And then once it's downloaded, you can have an express, express installation done easily. But come on. Do we have to download the whole ISO like easy something that we want to do? Takes like a lot of time. If you have the ISO though, well, then we can do like uh, something simpler that just select the ISO, put my username, password, click, click. It's installing at some point, I will get back here and I will show you guys that it works. But still, I have to download the ISO, and this is something that I do not want to do. So, I, in the last few weeks, I started working on something for virt install, which is going to reach uh, virt manager and then the unboxes in the future. Uh, let me show you guys what I've been working on. Uh, I have to set up a few things here because 
it, I'm going to, to upstream the patch at some point in the next two weeks. I still have to, to deal with a few things. So those are good enough for a demo right now, maybe. Uh, so instead of doing this whole uh, passing like this, he really, really huge amount of command lines. Uh, I'm just going to pass the name, this is required. Uh, I'm going to pass the best variant, and I will explain later on why. Uh, and I'm going to pass unattended. The profile, profile can be either uh, a just enough operational system, so we're just going to give you a really basic machine, uh, no desktop install, or you can have like a full desktop profile. And you can pass uh, a password here. I just use my secret, like some secure way. Uh, later on, uh, we are going to have a way to just specify. Uh, that's my plan, at least. An uh, SSH key, so you can just connect through it, like no password is going to be needed. It also depends on whatever like Anaconda is going to do. Uh, so. And with this, like this way shorter command line, we are just downloading uh, kernel with NITRD, doing the NITRD injection. And hopefully, in 40 minutes, we are going to have a machine. Or more. No one leaves to it, so. So, uh, <clears throat> like, while it's happening, let me tell you, like, the. So, this is actually the. <coughs> The difference, the, the main difference between the what you have done before and what you, you will be able to do with my patch. So that thing over there is huge. I don't remember any of those. I cannot. Uh, down there it's quite easy, but it's also limited. Like you are not going to have a machine that you, you are going to fine-tune. And if you want to fine-tune something, like you have better tools to do that, better ways to do that. So, what's happening behind the scenes? Cool. So, uh, behind the scenes, uh, we are using one of the projects that I take care of and I've been working on this since 2012. It's called LibreOSInfo and OSInfoDB. Actually, there are three parts of those projects. Uh, OSInfoDB is just a database of operational systems. And we have information there like uh, the amount of resources, like minimum resources needed by, uh, by an operational system, recommended resources, uh, we added uh, the resources needed when you are providing, doing your network installation. We have the kind of devices which are supported by, by some OS, which is quite important. Like right now, with this whole idea about moving to Q35 as the default machine type, we have to know for which kind of OS we are going to use Q35. Uh, we also have information about where you can get uh, a media, an installable media, where you can get uh, the, the tree location, uh, how to match. Uh, we can just have some APIs to match some ISO with some specific OS. And this is like pretty much what, what like OSINFODB and LibreOSINFO are providing. Uh, those projects have been heavily used by a few other projects. Uh, OpenStack Nova is using OSINFODB directly, they are not using LibreOSINFO. Uh, Gnome Boxes is heavily using LibreOSINFO. Virt Manager is heavily using LibreOSINFO. Kubivirt, they are, we have, have been having some talks. And Sorry? OpenStack also uses a bit of LibreOSINFO. Oh, do they? I, I have to go check the code. It's, I didn't write that piece, but it's... Thick. Oh, because I thought they were just using the DB directly. Yes, the last time we talked, that's what I was saying. Okay, okay. And, and uh, Kubivirt is going to use it, but I guess they're just using for validation. I'm still not sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and LibreOSINFO has another small project called OSINFODB Tools, which is just like a set of tools to help you dealing, to deal with the database. So, shall you rely on your distro to have 
all those things up to date? Yeah. Well, it really depends. Uh, for my SynthetDB, I, I try to do one release every 15 days. If I have material, one release is done every 15 days. Release is done, packages on Fedora, same day. Packages on OpenSUSE, usually like same day or day after. If I don't do that, uh, Shard is doing. Uh, Debian, same thing. Uh, the maintainer is quite responsible, we just have it like next few days. Some other distros, well, we have a bunch of bugs like reported by Arch Linux people that this is not updated, they have tried to rec recognize like a new release OS, support's not there, they open a bug against Chrome boxes, they open a bug against Rick Manager, and well. And what about Santos? So, we do our release on help, we rebase it on help on every release. I mean, every release, even this track. This is still too late. So, I'm not sure if at some point in the future we are going to change something on CentOS that we can have this kind of packages. Like, because one thing is, we don't, I understand that we don't want to have uh, GCC like to replace it every time and people just push in. But man, this is a database. This is like uh, this is data. This is this is just like uh, PCI IDs. This can be just updated every two weeks. And so if you are running CentOS, you most likely will have to rely on OSIFDB tools in order to keep your database up to date. Uh, one minute, since the, the boxes version is finished, let's just see if it boots. Ooh. So this, is, this was an installation done you know, using an ISO. So it works, no interaction, a basic virtual machine. Uh, we still have to wait for another one. So, keeping the database up to date. Uh, we have a few tools to, in order to do that. We have OSFDB import. And what you can do is you can just go to our release web page. You can do, just download the latest uh, package that we have there. And then you can just run a command like this. OSFDB import and the package. But come on, uh, a few minutes ago I was complaining about opening a web page in downloading an ISO, right? So, <laughs> sounds like not so quiet. So, I made a patch, I made it simpler. So, we started accepting URLs. I still have to go there, <laughs> get to the page, get to the link, so what is the difference, right? So, it can be done in a simpler way. So, I just added was to the beam for dash dash latest. Uh, we have a JSON, JSON file that is just up to date, updated every time I do a new release of the database and then I simply the import just get it, gets it from there, updates your system and that's it. And this is enough to have your system up to date. This is something that I, I would recommend you guys to do if you have some interest in it. Supporting new stuff, uh, and of course you can add some modification. Uh, <coughs> just keep one thing in mind: please do not mess with your system. By any means, go to USR, share was info, and start editing files there. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Maybe because we are going to rewrite this like the next installation, but well. Uh, so, we support some dropping files uh, that is like an easy way to configure that. And I actually have done that here in order to, to do this installation because as you guys can see here, for instance, this is, you guys can see over there, I guess, Installation is happening, but if there is someone from Anaconda here, just 
uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, but when you are doing a, a tree based installation, what happens is Anaconda just downloads the whole stage 2 into the memory and then it starts installing from that. That's a lot of fun that's just consumed. So we have to have specific resources for that. And unfortunately, we don't have this implemented on any distro yet, on any, any management app yet. Uh, we have patches for that that were released on, on LibOS Info like two days ago, but we don't have support for, for the manager boxes. So what I have done here in order to, to be able to have this installation happening, uh, I created uh, a dropping file that just has this kind of contact here. It just like uh, increases the CPU just because I, I have the hope that it's going to be a little bit faster. Uh, increases the amount of run because otherwise the installation would just bail out. And if for some reason you want to have your well, for any reason you want to customize uh, your database when you are starting some system, you can just do that. And I also add some logo. And this is quite interesting. I'm not sure if you guys noticed that. I'm going to open the normal boxes again to show it to you guys. Uh, so, uh, can you see the samples there? Is it possible? So, here we have CentOS 6.9, this like blase kind of uh, media. This is horrible. This is horrible. This is not attractive to anyone. And we have this beautiful logo here. Usually people have this, uh, they are attracted by the visual identity of the project. They, they see the logo, they know what it's about, and they're just going to install it. And so that's the reason I added the logo there. But we are going to talk about the logo soon. Uh, and one more thing about customization is seriously, do not mess with your system, please. So, uh, just going to ask some help here and explain a few things. <coughs> Sorry. First thing is, uh, I really would like to have someone from CentOS that would help me not taking really bad decisions as I did in the past because when CentOS 7 came out I was like it's going to be like CentOS 6, right? Uh, each ISO is going to have its own volume ID so if you have like uh, CentOS 6.0, 6.1 it's going to be like all different volume IDs and then you can just match things like, like that so I created uh, the CentOS 7.0 entry, this ID is unique we have a short ID uh, 7 one came, same room ID, and then I was like, oh, it's going to be 7, forever. And now I have a bogus entry in the, <laughs> in the database. If someone from the community, if I have asked the community, this is the first thing, if I have asked the community at that point, I'm pretty sure someone will just tell me, like, please don't do that. <laughs> Because now it's quite weird, I'm starting like a, a CentOS 76 and I pass in the, the US variant as 70. Like. <coughs> Do you guys know how is it how is it going to be for, for 8? No idea, right? So when it comes out, please, I, I will try to contact someone to avoid doing really making like really bad decisions like this one. Uh, I need some help also to have CentOS properly advertised on boxes. Because this is something that is a discussion that have, has been going like for quite a while. Uh, Rich here has helped a lot with that. We have the authorization to have a logo that fit on, on boxes. But someone has to do the logo. Someone has to work on that. So nowadays the logos that we have that are available for usage are, are 
those ones in your life. Would you like, there is nothing wrong with them. But if you take a look at boxes, we just want something that is just the logo, like it looks better in the project. And of course you guys have something quite similar for Docker already. So I started a discussion, it got stuck, it got authorized a few months ago, but we need someone to actually work on the logo. And I'm not able to do that, like my, my skills on doing that are as good as my, my CrossFit skills. <laughs> which you guys can see that are not that good. And so, if there is someone who is a designer who is willing to help, let's talk about this. I really need some help. Uh, and if you guys start using it for some reason, you guys have some interest to actually start using this. Uh, if you face some issue, <laughs> report it. Uh, we are open, I, I, this is like, I am almost running the show by myself nowadays, but I have pretty much all my time on this, so I'm there to help you guys, and there to make it easier for everyone to actually start using this. And so if there's something weird, let me know, I'm going to fix it in a few days, hopefully. And just open a web report, like, and here is pretty much all the channels where you can find us. I try to be quite responsive on IRC, usually. And, well, just ping me there, my nick is Fidencio over there, and we can do some things. Uh, here is the, the other installation, it's still going, I'm not sure if we, we actually want to stay here to wait for 1000 packages to be installed but you guys got an idea, right? so I guess it's time to share the mic like this someone has some question, comments or something like that how does the OZ project come into picture? The OZ installer. I don't know if you remember that. So we got, yes, we, we talked to the OZ guys uh, seven years ago and all the, the scripts that we have for installation. Because let me show you guys one thing. The JEOS, the Just Enough OS term comes from there, right? And, and all, all the installers that we have came from that. Yeah. We, 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 we reuse some of that. Too. Yes, we reuse it because it doesn't make sense to create your own. So let me just show you guys the installers that we have. Uh, we have, uh, we can provide an attendant installations for a few distros like CentOS, Debian, Fedora, which I mean Fedora is like Fedora and Fedora Silverblue, uh, all flavors of Windows, like all versions of Windows including old stuff like XP, <laughs> uh, OpenSUSE, Red Hat, uh, I would like to have it working for for less as well, but last time I, I got to do this, I downloaded their ISO. Three weeks later, someone was calling me, like asking how was my experience with less and whether I would like to buy it. And of course, in three weeks, I didn't have time to actually try it. Uh, and for Ubuntu, the Ubuntu situation is quite broken right now. It just supports uh, Geos, and even though it's totally broken, I'm going to have a meeting with Canonical guys tomorrow in order to have it sorted out. So the scripts that we have, the, let me show the Geos. It's part of the bird install repo, which did this file that I'm showing you. No, this is part of my for db Ah, okay. This is my for db repo. Uh, so it's just like a really basic, uh, Kickstart file that we got from, from OS Labs. We built a little bit on top of this because we are supporting different kinds of uh, uh, the different kinds of uh, kickstart injection, let's say this way. And yeah, but we, we got it from them. Okay, yeah, because the format for JOS is XML, the, the, the file where you specify unintended. Yeah. At, at some point, at some point, we were actually, I was actually 
uh, fixing uh, stuff on, on OS InfoDB and sending some patches back to them. Yeah. Uh, then, well. And so, if no one has any more questions, I guess. Oh, so, you have one. Well, just um, a try out um, Fedora Netbook Edition 32-bit. It's um, been out in the magazines recently. Now, a lot of distros that are dropping 386 support. Now, how long is that going to be active for? So, the what, how is that different sort of part from being a bit more likely to sort of name, name Fedora? Which kind of Fedora? It's the uh, first 2-bit Netbook Edition. I, 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 I don't know. You don't know? Okay. I don't know, but after the talk, we can just. I guess I can just download it, right? Yeah, well, it's on the cover, you know, what the magazine is or something, because mm -hmm. I am parking that go, you know what I mean? But it's quite rare to see those two bit distributions, unless it's sort of community ones now, because obviously it's being dropped. So, as long as they support, uh, as long as they have Anaconda being started, mm -hmm. uh, because this is the thing, as long as it's not a live CD, because live CDs on Fedora, they have a, a, a small issue that they don't start on a Yeah. Uh, as long as on a is started, you can pass the, the kickstart and you can make it work. Most likely, it's not going to be the same kickstart that we use for, for Fedora Workstation or that we use for Fedora Silvergo. We would have to create a new one, but we are more than happy to support it. Mm -hmm. It's quite good because I've said most of the 13 bits are gradually disappearing. Yes. Nice to see another new one come out. So, you still use some old, your 32 bit jobs. Yeah. Someone else? So, that's all. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.